Uh, question, go ahead. Actually, I hope the demo gods are with us here. Um, I just want to make sure that the slideshow is in good shape. And then I'll take the question. Okay, uh, question. Sorry, I'm curious if you have some uh, mechanism for setting um, uh, some sort of rules like I don't use iframes in my site or I, I use one JavaScript thing and it's over here so that you could in sort of a global way block that stuff. So the question is, um, is there a way to say that I don't use iframes on my site? Um, well, in the case that actually the, um, so, so I, I think the, the best way to answer that is to say that the monitoring service will not flag anything that isn't, say, serving a, a malware drive by download. In this case, we basically told the monitoring service, hey, this image is bad, don't serve it. But in, in the, the more general case, because of the fact that the monitoring service is behavioral, so long as there's no malicious activity going on, um, you know, nothing would get, say, inadvertently stripped out from the site if that's one of the concerns. Um, at the same time, because it's behavioral, if there is any element, regardless of what, whatever it is, um, uh, if it's, if it's uh, malicious and doing the bad thing, it, it, you know, it'll get stripped out. So the thing is that it's dependent upon how the monitoring service works. And then, of course, you can write a monitoring service to, to you know, configure it as you would like. Okay, great. Let me go ahead and um, continue forward. Um, uh, actually, one more question I'll take and then I'll continue forward. Where's this monitoring service? Like, is it part of anti -mal uh, the mod anti-malware thing or? Oh, uh, okay. So the question is where is the monitoring service? About IDS or IPS or something that's maybe sending out some syslog message and it parsing it or something? Sure. So the question is where is the monitoring service? Uh, in this particular case, the monitoring service is at, is at dacient.com and it basically re resides in the cloud, right? It relies on a bunch of servers that scan the web server in this case, right? So. Uh, it's in the cloud, and um, uh, you know there isn't a lot of deployment overhead for it, and there's a lot of other advantages that that that, that has. Uh, oh, and so the question is, 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 is it something that somebody else can provide? Yes, absolutely. So if, uh, actually, I'm going to talk a little bit more about how Mod Hand Time Hour works in detail with its configuration directives and its handlers, et cetera. And, um, you, know, uh, you know, today, uh, you know, Dacient is the only provider that, uh, you know, produces quarantining directives for Mod Hand Time Hour. But, you know, one of the things that we hope to do is, you know, create you know, create the, the the market here, create the infrastructure, and so other providers could also could also support mod anti malware. So let me talk a little bit more about the the details. But before I do that, I just want to summarize the high level benefit here and talk about what the world looked like before mod anti malware and what the world looked like looks like after mod anti malware. So without anti, mod anti malware, what would happen is that a site would get attacked. Um, at some point, um, you know, it would get discovered by the website owners, but in the meantime, users would unknowingly be getting infected. And um, even after the website discovers that there's a problem, their technical teams would typically be in a crisis mode. Their senior engineers would have to get pulled off of whatever they're doing, figure out exactly where the infection is. Uh, on the website, what pages it's impacting, wh what is the infection on the page, um, what needs to be eliminated out of the files, what needs to be eliminated out of the database to, to resolve the problem. Uh, and so typically um, before the existence of mod anti malware, it would take you know, some number of days for the bad guys to contain, or for the good guys rather, to contain the attack and, and remove it. During that entire time, the company running the website could get, could get blacklisted and lose their brand, customer's revenue, et cetera. With mod anti-malware in place, it significantly shortcuts and streamlines the containment of the infections. And the way that takes place is that when a site gets attacked, the monitoring service, in an automated way, discovers and diagnoses the problem, sends the, in the model that we saw, sends the report to the security team and or to the webmaster, um, contains the infection once the approval takes place, and um, you know, so, so the containment tank can take place within a matter of hours or even faster, just depending upon how fast the site is monitored and how fast the, the security team and or webmaster responds. So 
uh, the containment can happen now within within hours or even faster. And then the interesting thing is that you know even though the site is still in an infected state, there's infections in the files, infections in the databases, wherever those infections can be removed uh, without having to be in a panic code red mode where the website is losing its traffic, its revenue, its users, etc. So, so that's um, what the world looks like with modern anti malware. I should also mention that modern anti malware can be deployed in a model where you know, the approval doesn't necessarily need to take place. We, for instance, at Dayscant work with a number of web hosting providers, and some of them have basically said, look, I want you to do the quarantining for me automatically. Just go ahead and automatically deploy the quarantining directives. No, no uh, user or administrator approval required. And that basically sh uh, makes the containment work pretty much as fast as the websites being monitored. So, so that's um, w w uh, without mod anti malware, with anti malware. Let me talk more about the details and the architecture. So, mod anti malware is available both as an Apache or as an IES module. Um, it's structured as an output filter in both cases. Uh, the main function is a function called quarantine filter, and I'll talk about, I'll provide a schematic on how quarantine filter works. Um, I should also mention there's two versions of mod anti malware. There's a standard version and there's a light version. We have made the light version open source. So you can go to SourceForge, type in Dacient, and download the mod anti malware light module. Or you can come to Dacient.com and download the mod anti malware light module. Uh, when you, when you download it from Dacient.com and sign up, we also will provide uh, uh, some free trial malware monitoring for, for the website that you're using to, to try out uh, mod anti malware light. So you know please feel free to to check that out. Um, in terms of in terms of mod anti malware's architecture, there's a couple key things that characterizes its operation. The first thing that characterizes its operation is a set of handlers that the module supports, where a handler is of course a URL at the at the domain. And there's three handlers, status Z, config Z, and top Z, and I'll talk a little bit about each of those. Uh, and then the second thing that characterizes mod anti malware is the set of configuration directives that it supports. And also, I'll also talk about the, the uh, configuration directives. But let me talk a little bit about each of these handlers first. Um, so basically, if you have a domain like domain.com, then when mod anti malware gets installed on that domain, uh, that mod the module will respond to requests for domain.com slash status z or domain.com slash config z or domain.com slash top z. And each of these handlers does something different. So what status z will do is it will echo w what is the, the last set of configuration directives that was sent to mod anti malware. Config z will allow the requester to send configuration directives to mod anti malware. Topsy will echo what are the most frequently accessed URLs at the at, at domain.com. And the reason for that is because you want to make sure that you're monitoring the most popular URLs most frequently. Because very often when the attackers spread web based malware, they have a strong incentive to affect those pages that are most popularly used because that will give them the largest footprint in terms of infecting users. So I talked a little bit about the handlers. Let me chat a little bit about the configuration directives. So there's uh, four configuration directives that I'll talk about here. Mod anti malware supports more configuration directives, of course. Um, but uh, the first one that I want to talk about is a directive called uh, Dacient Shared Auth Key. So you could imagine that you only want certain authorized parties to be sending configuration directives to your mod anti malware module. You don't want people reconfiguring your web server or um, or or you know stripping out uh, you know legitimate uh, elements on, on the on the page. Um, so. Uh, so, so that's what um, what the Dacian shared auth key does is it allows the webmaster to specify what is the shared authentication key that should be used when the caller, the monitoring service, authenticates to the web server. So that's one configuration directives. Um, mod anti malware light, uh, as well as mod anti malware, support a second configuration directive, which is called a set blacklist redirect message. So I talked about 
mod anti malware, the premium version, and I talked about mod anti malware light. The key distinction with mod anti malware light is that in the case that a web page gets infected, what mod anti malware light will do is it won't, um, you know, strip out the, you know, just the malicious uh, piece of code that's infected, but instead will serve a message of the webmaster's choice and block the entire page from going out. So the idea there is that when mod anti malware light is used to, uh, you know, is used to contain a, a web-based malware infection, then if a website gets infected, then instead of the user seeing the red screen of death from the browser or seeing the, you know, other types of messages, the webmaster can choose a message like, this server is experiencing technical difficulties, please come back later, or whatever HTML web page that the webmaster would choose uh, to be served to users so that even if parts of their site are infected, the rest of the website can continue to be used and for those web pages that did get infected, uh, the user sees a, a, a much less scarier message than, than otherwise. So the set blacklist redirect message configuration directive does exactly that. Uh, the, the next configuration directive that's supported by mod anti malware light is blacklist redirect URL prefix. And basically, it's, it, it specifies a prefix of URLs that, for which the regular infected page should not be served, and instead the blacklist redirect message should be served. So in this particular case, it's saying that foo1.html, instead of serving that page, serve the blacklist redirect message. Now, blacklist redirect URL prefix is an example of a quarantining directive, and mod anti malware, the, 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 uh, you know, supports a number of different quarantining directives. But this uh, redirect message is just one of them. Uh, there's other messages that would, for instance, be able to quarantine a particular path in an HTML DOM if that particular path is where the infection is. And there's a number of other mechanisms. Uh, the final directive that I'll talk about is a directive called uh, Remote Directives File, and it basically specifies what is the file on the web server into which all of these uh, directives should be stored. So uh, that's what that's what that particular directive does. Uh, I mentioned that there's um, you know quarantining directives. There's two kinds. The kind supported by mod anti malware light supports the blocking of infected pages from being served to users, and the um, you know the, the full version. Uh, supports filtering of the malicious code from being served to users. So, so those are the two kinds of directives. I figured it might be useful to illustrate um, uh, what happens when a authenticated request is made to any of the handlers. So by the way, all of the handlers require the Dacient shared authentication key to be specified. Uh, the request must take place over SSL, it's got to be a post, etc. And so when you make a authenticated request to status Z, what what, what you'll get back is uh, data like this. You'll get back the process ID of the uh, web server process that served it, what its parent was, what was the last time that configuration data was sent, what was the configuration data that was sent, and um, you know some data about some data about what are the current configuration directives that are being used by the module. So um, so that's an example of what comes up in uh, in status Z. In this particular case, um, redirection for the foo1.html page is being enabled and the uh, technical difficulties message is being shown. Um, so that's the status Z call. The next call is config Z. Um, it will basically, once it gets called with new configuration directives, it'll, out, it'll output what was the configuration data before the change in configuration data and what was the configuration data after and it will give the caller a message to let them know whether or not the new directives specified in the config Z request were actually sent to the file. Um, so basically there's two updates that happen when config Z occurs. The first update that occurs is that in the web server process that receives the request, uh, it will update the directives that are used in memory. It will also write those directives to disk and the memory that it uses is shared across the web server processes. So the new configuration directive